these are the examples of uh, municipal waste. Compost. Compost is nothing but a manure. How it is formed? Decomposition of organic waste. Any example? Not cow dung basically. It has to be leaves, vegetables, bioorganisms. And how do you form compost? Anybody does gardening here? You do. You do. Have you ever formed compost in your garden? That's right. Well, this is a miniature landfill. So, what you do in a big landfill is the same activity at a larger scale, which you are doing in your kitchen garden. The whole idea is to degrade the waste and by degradation, what is that you are achieving? You are lowering the volume of the waste which has been created. So, one agenda which is in the mind is when you deal with waste management issues that how to reduce the volume of the waste which is coming out of the industries. Clear? So, it's a good example, compost. In IIT, I think we are adopting this technique. So, you might have seen people in the morning, they keep on brooming the roads and they collect leaves and all. So, ultimately, where do they throw all the leaves? So, they collect it and they dump it somewhere where they produce a lot of manure for the entire campus. Scrap tires. What is meant by scrap tires? Used tires. So, India is becoming a major market for car companies. So, apart from traffic congestion, what is the biggest threat? Disposal of tires. So, every third year or fourth year when you go for servicing of the car, they say you change the tires. So, it is very easy to say change the tires. But ultimately, where you are going to dump these tires? So, this is where scrap tires becomes very important and most of the geotechnical engineers have, you know, got some good answers to these problems. Any guess what they are doing with this? See, I am not in favor of distracting the matrix of the soil first, adding something and recompacting it. So, those who belong to this school of thought, they should be careful. See, natural soil is the most stable condition of the soil clear? Then the issue is, you may dig out the soil, but where you are going to keep it? In a city like Bombay, where there is no place to even to keep the soil by digging it out of the pit. How you are going to mix something into it? When the larger, larger interest, you will see in my subsequent discussions that scrap tires have been used by people in making embankments, roads, mastic asphalt and so on, shredded asphalt, you know, they mix asphalt and scrap tire chips. I will demonstrate to you one of the methodologies of using these scrap tires for making pavements in next class or maybe today's lecture, depending upon the time. So, scrap tires is becoming a very big issue. I will discuss about this. Used oil, engine oils. That's right. So, most of the car companies, they are very particular that the engine oil should be changed every six months. Did you ever ask your automobile dealer that why it should be done and ultimately what do you do with this oil? You should ask next time. It is a big technology and a million dollar industry. You know this? It is not so easy to talk about what engine oil does to the engine. As I understand, whatever you have said is okay. If you go into the too much technicalities, engine oil should stop the abrasion of cylinders. So, it should be anti-abrasion. Second thing is, it should be thermally stable. 
it should lower down the temperature otherwise what will happen the engine cylinders themselves will get corroded so it's a big science when you say like we visited one industry in bombay and the fellow says that he is the only one in asia i suppose who produces engine oil and the type of waste which is generating we are trying to utilize it somewhere else we are trying to study the property of that waste if you get some time uh, we may plan a visit there especially the industry which produces 2t for the engines apart from engine oils what type of oils you can think of sorry that is not very severe i think good example should be transformer oil which is a big challenge because of oil after certain time becomes spent oil that means its dielectric constant keeps on changing the more and more it, you use it so it will never behave like a insulator unless you recycle it clean it or you know process it so the more and more civilization is taking place what's happening the society is producing more and more scrap tires more and more used oil ultimately where you are going to throw it where you are going to stack it how you are going to recycle it how you are going to clean it so these are becoming you know very important challenges you may take some seminars topics from today's discussions sewage sludge i think somebody was talking about the sludge which comes out of the i think sneha was talking about this sewage sludge yes this is also one of the types of municipal waste water treatment sludge purification of the sludge which comes out of the water treatment plants so these are of low hazardicity again the question is you use the word low and high and medium what is the scale clear so as on date there is no scale as such where you can define what is meant by low high and medium of course these are all abstract thinking but the idea is simple that uh, their intensity is not much well as you can make out from the list of industrial non hazardous waste coal ash that is the fly ash or bottom ash some people classify coal ash as non hazardous some may classify it as hazardous what should be the difference between the two as you said rightly that uh, it is airborne it gets airborne and then it may cause carcinogenic effects you know if you breathe in your lungs may get affected there could be lot of loss of visi visibility in the neighborhood it could form a dust and so on but suppose if i say is non hazardous have you heard of tclp test in your environmental engineering courses did they talk about tclp no so it's a test basic basically which talks about how much concentration of a contaminant will leach out of a material so based on the leachability of the material we can also classify this as a hazardous and non hazardous so these things we'll study slightly later so based on toxicity that means the amount of toxic elements which are associated with the waste hazardicity the amount of hazardous materials which are associated with the waste and so on if your coal ashes are not leaching when they come in contact with water that means no heavy metals are leaching out of the waste matrix it is non hazardous but if the ash has a tendency to leach different metal ions it becomes hazardous and toxic so what is the difference between hazardicity and toxicity if i take certain concentration of a contaminant clear it could be highly toxic if i dilute it it becomes less toxic 
if i keep on diluting it it becomes less 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 toxic very less toxic if i further dilute it what happens it becomes non toxic you got this point so basically depending upon the concentration of the toxic materials which are present in the system you may say whether it is toxic hazardous or toxic non hazardous is not possible because toxicity is available it is already associated so toxicity itself is hazardous but its magnitude depends upon the concentration of the waste so this philosophy basically helps you in designing the code of conduct for the society and for different countries you got the idea so based on this concept certain industrial process whether it is going to be toxic or non hazardous hazardous is going to be determined most of the ferrous and non ferrous slags are under the category of non hazardous waste so when we are talking about non hazardicity of the waste can you think of a situation where you would like to use it when we are saying that certain waste are non hazardous where can you use the ggbfs okay so they may go either in construction or as a foundation material or as a fill material that's right but if your ash is active and if it is going to interact by any chance with the ground water or the rain water then you cannot take this chance so based on this consideration you can use the material at the appropriate place this is a very big concern particularly when you talk about application of fly ash for mine closures so if ash is reacting with water and if leachability is very high you cannot use it for filling the mines but if it is a passive material there is no harm so based on this concept government of india had come up with some regulations that every power plant requires coal so there was a sort of a condition that we will buy coal from a mine we will buy the coal but the ash which is getting produced should be taken back to the mine and the mine should be filled up clear so this has become now a code of compliance so this is how the codes are formed related to activities which may cause enough toxicity or hazardicity in the environment is this part clear the third application is third example is reclaimed paving materials mostly construction materials which are used as a paving material wbm mostly construction and demolition debris i think we have talked about this in the earlier lecture in city like bombay or all metros mega cities the biggest challenge is every now and then you have to go for reconstruction of the buildings so the biggest issue is where to throw the demolition or the construction debris by the way the road connecting to eastern express highway and lbs mark this was done based on the construction debris only so in 2000 i think they started dumping debris on both the sides of the roads so where you fly off right now it's nothing but the foundations are laid with construction and demolition debris they have consolidated over a period of time 2 3 years 4 years and now they have constructed the whole pavement over it earlier it was nothing but a marshy land cement and lime kiln dusts again you can use this as a construction material part replacement of construction material which are normally used in concrete sulfates any example of sulfate which comes to your mind which is very challenging sorry phosphogypsum phosphogypsum is a good example of the type of sulfates which you talk about is it not so sulfuric acid and then it comes in contact with calcium sulfates sulfur trioxide fumes have to be captured so that they do not go into the environment so this is where you create enough phosphogypsum 
Phosphogypsum is also a very hot topic for research in environmental geotechnology. Foundry, ceramic, silica fumes. We have talked about silica fumes earlier. So, silica fume is nothing but a sort of a byproduct which comes out of these industries which are manufacturing what? Sorry? Alumina. It is a mesonomer. When you say silica fume, it is truly a mesonomer which is associated with aluminum industry. Dredge material. We are involved with the project right now. We are doing it for JNPT, where JNPT has asked us to study the properties of the material which can be used for reclaiming land from the sea. And when we talk about reclaiming land, it's about say 200 hectares, which has to be reclaimed from the sea, so that one more terminal for the ships can be generated. This is becoming a very good subject in uh, geotechnical engineering, reclamation of land, particularly when you go to Singapore or some other Norwegian countries where land is scarce, Japan, Malaysia, Indonesia. So, this is where this industry is flourishing a lot and it has very good scope for people who want to do something new. So, the biggest question is when you, why do you do dredging? Are you aware of what is dredging activity? Yeah, this is a very old school of thought. Nowadays, as I said, you do any activity as long as you are not hampering others' freedom, you know, it is ok. But when the moment you say, I will dress something here and I will dump it somewhere, the question is where you are going to dump it? Who is going to allow you to do that? So, if you have been reading the newspaper, the Victoria Docks at Bombay Port Trust, it is a huge land which is abandoned right now. So, the biggest question is that what to do with this land which is in the heart of the city and the cost of that land would be few thousands of crores of rupees. So, this is where the geotechnical engineering is involved. So, what type of solutions you are going to give to the society related to these activities. Now, coming back to the dredging aspect, the challenge is that dredging is nothing but taking out something from somewhere. So, if you want to deepen rivers, what do you do? You remove the sand. You might have seen sand being dredged from Dharmatar Creek or some other rivers in your localities. At a bigger level, this activity is done in the sea. Why? It could be maintenance dredging, where you want to maintain every year, you have to clean the channels so that the ships can come up to the port. Otherwise, think of a situation where the entire siltation takes place and no ship can enter your port, then your country's economy is going to get affected. It is a big issue. So, next time when you go to Elephanta Caves, just look at your left hand side where the JNPT is, Jain Jawaharlal Nehru Port Trust. So, they spend huge amount of money just for maintaining their channels. The way you maintain your channels, CPA channels in your houses. Every day you clean it. Why? So, logic is same. Otherwise, too much of siltation will take place and water will not drain out. So, there the effect is if siltation takes place, ships cannot come inside the port and economy gets hampered. The second is intentional dredging. Intentional dredging is nothing but sort of a creating something out of the material which you are dredging from the sea, reclamation. So, this is where the geotechnics of dredging comes into the picture. A very interesting topic on which nowadays some people are working is beach nourishment. So, overnight you can create beaches. You have not heard this earlier? That is right. Word islands and palm islands, these are good examples of the dredging process. So, you dredge the sand from the sea and then create islands. And what is the cost of these islands? So, anyway, so this is becoming a very good uh, uh, you know subject in geotechnical engineering where some of you may concentrate later on. My idea is to give you as much as information possible. 
and whatever I know a bit. So then comes uh, minerals, mineral extraction process. So you do waste rocks, which are nothing but mill tillings, tillings. So mill, you know what is milling process? Milling process is nothing but an extraction of metals from the ores and whatever is the residue has to be disposed of and piled up. So this becomes a good case of mill tillings. Sometimes they call it as tills also, T-I-L-L-S, tills, coal refuse. So one project which I did, I would like to show you how we tackle this type of situation at Korba. The washery rejects. What are washery rejects? This is the washing of coal. So there is a big project going on at most of the coal mines where whatever coal comes out has to be cleaned, washed, segregated and then only it can be sent for a proper use. So the biggest challenge is how to use these waste or the rejects which are coming out of the mining process of coal for some important purpose, phosphor gypsum. I have talked about this under the category of the sulphates. You know, all acids can be nullified when you treat them with calcium carbonate. But then whatever is the residue is calcium sulphate and calcium sulphate where you are going to dispose and how you are going to dispose is a big challenge. So this is where phosphor gypsum becomes important when you process sulphuric acid, phosphoric acid, phosphorus and so on. Agriculture itself is an industry nowadays. So animal manure becomes non-hazardous waste. Crops, different type of crops and the stalks of the trees particularly and the wood. Some other categories are organic and liquid waste. Solid waste combustion residues. Incineration process, whenever you adopt whatever is left over, again requires some special treatment or a special at attention of people, how to dispose it of. Reclaimed plastic, why there is a ban on reclamation, uh, uh, there is a recycling of plastic. That is a different issue altogether. Why recycling of plastic is banned? Yes, please. That is right. That is correct, sulphur trioxide. So whenever you incinerate plastic or recycle plastic, basically it is a PVC chain, polyvinyl chloride chain. So when you break it, you require a lot of energy. So the first question is from where you are going to bring so much energy, whether it is economical or not. And second issue is when you are breaking these bonds, a lot of sulphur trioxide goes into the environment and the waste glass. Waste glass also is attaining lot of attention of people, particularly from geotechnical engineering fraternity. I gave you an example of beach nourishment. Sometimes they call it as beach recreation also. You may recreate beaches, you know, wherever sands are less. So, good example is our society is producing a lot of waste glass. Most of the drinks, juices, you know, utility items, they are contained in glass. So the question is, once you have used it, you simply throw it. Now if you crush this glass, it becomes sand and that sand can be used for nourishment of beaches and recreation of beaches. I will give you one example where this type of work has been done. So this is again interesting process. One of you should adopt this as a you know, business. <laughs> we need more entrepreneurs in our subject now. Lot of work is required to be done in these areas. You can do very well in life. 